the epistle of Ignatius to the Smyrnians. Ignatius, who is also called the Aporus, to the Church of God the Father, and of the loved, and of the beloved Jesus Christ, which has through mercy obtained every kind of gift, which is filled with faith and love, and is deficient in no gift, most worthy of God, and adorned with holiness, the Church, which is at Smyrna in Asia, wishes abundance of happiness through the Immaculate Spirit of the Word of God. Ignatius, who is also called the Aporius, the Church of God, the Most High Father, and His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, which has through mercy obtained every kind of gift, which is filled with faith and love, and is deficient in, the, in no gift, most worthy of God, and adorned with holiness. The Church, which is in Smyrna, in Asia, wishes abundance of happiness through the Immaculate Spirit of, and the Word of God. Chapter 1 Thanks to God for your faith. I glorify God, even Jesus Christ, who has given you such wisdom. For I have observed that ye are perfected, ye are perfected in an immovable faith, as if ye were nailed to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, both in the flesh and in the spirit, and are established in love to the blood of Christ, being fully persuaded with respect to our Lord that he was truly of the seed of David according to the flesh, and the Son of God according to the will and power of God, that he was truly born of a virgin was baptized by John in order that all righteousness might be fulfilled by him, and was truly under Pontius Pilate, and Herod the, te the Tetrarch, nailed to the cross for us in his flesh. Of this fruit we are by his divinely blessed passion, that he might set up a standard for all ages through his resurrection, to all his holy and faithful followers, whether among Jews or Gentile, and the one body of his church. I glorify the God and Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who by him has given you such wisdom. For I have, have observed that ye are perfected in an immovable faith, as if ye were nailed to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, both in the flesh and in the spirit, and are established in love through the blood of Christ, being fully persuaded in, in very truth with respect to our Lord Jesus Christ, that he was the Son of God, the firstborn of every creature, God, the Word, the only begotten Son, and was the seed of David according to the flesh, by the Virgin Mary was baptized by John, that all righteousness not, might be fulfilled by him, that he lived a life of holiness without sin, and was truly under Pontius Pilate and Herod the Tetrarch, nailed to the cross for us in his flesh, for whom we also derive our being, from his divinely blessed passion, that he might set up a standard for the ages, through his resurrection to his holy and faithful fathers, whether among Jews or Gentiles, in the one body of his church. Chapter 2 Christ's True Passion Now he suffered all these things for our sake that we might be saved. And he suffered truly, even as he truly raised up himself not as certain unbelievers maintain that he only seemed to suffer as they themselves only seemed to be Christians. And as they believe, so shall it happen unto them. When they shall be divested of their bodies and the mere evil spirits, now he suffered all these things for us, and he suffered them really, and not in appearance only, even as also he truly rose again, but not as some of the unbelievers, who are ashamed of the formation of man and the cross and death itself, affirm that in appearance only, and not in truth. He took a body of the virgin, and suffered only in appearance, forgetting as they do him who said, The word was made flesh, and again, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up, and once more. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto, unto me. The word therefore did dwell in the flesh, for wisdom built herself a house. The word raised up again his own temple on the third day, when it had been destroyed by the Jews fighting against Christ. The word, when his flesh was lifted, after the manner of the brazen serpent in the wilderness, drew all men to himself for their eternal salvation. Chapter 3 Christ was possessed of the body after his resurrection. For I know that after his resurrection he was still possessed of flesh, and I believe he is so now. When, for instance, he came to those who were with Peter, he said to them, Lay hold, handle me, and see that I am not in corporeal spirit. And immediately they touched him and believed, being convinced by his flesh and spirit, for this cause. Also they despised death, and were found its conquerors. And after his resurrection, 
he did eat and drink with them, and being possessed of flesh, although spiritually he was united to the Father. And I know that he was possessed of a body, not only in his being born and crucified, but I also know that he was so after his resurrection, and believe that he is so now. When, for instance, he came to those who were with Peter, he said to them, Lay hold, handle me, and see that I am not in corporeal spirit. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, and ye see that I have. And he says to Thomas, Reach hither my finger into the print of the nails, and reach into my hand, and thrust into my side. And immediately they believed that he was Christ. Wherefore Thomas also says to him, My Lord and my God, and on this account also did they despise death, for it were too little to say, Indigent of ease and stripes, nor was this all, but also after he had shown himself to them, that he had risen indeed, and not in appearance only. He both ate and drank with them during forty entire days, and thus he was wished with the flesh, received up in their sight unto him that sent him, being with the same flesh to come again, accompanied by glory and power, for say the holy oracles, the same Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go unto the heaven. But if they say that he will come at the end of the world without a body, how shall those see him that pierced him? And when they recognize him, mourn for themselves. For incorporeal beings have neither form nor figure nor the aspect of an animal possessed of shape, because their nature is in itself simple. Chapter 4 Beware of the heretics. I give you these instructions, beloved, assured that ye also hold the same opinions as I do, but I guard you beforehand from those beasts in the shape of men, whom you must not only not receive, but if it possible, not even meet with them. Only you must pray to God for them. If by any means they may be brought to repentance, which, however, will be very difficult, yet Jesus Christ, who is our true life, has the power of affecting this. But if these things were done by our Lord only in appearance, then am I also only in appearance bound? And why have I also suffered my myself to death, to fire, to the sword, to the wild beast? But in fact, he who is near to the sword is near to God. He that is among the wild beasts is in company with God, provided only... He be so in the name of Jesus Christ. I undergo all these things that I may suffer together with him. He who become a perfect man inwardly strengthens me. I give you these instructions, beloved, assured that ye also hold the same opinions as I do. But I guard you beforehand from these beasts in the shape of men from whom you must not only turn away, but even flee from them. Only you must pray for them. If by any means that it may be brought to repentance, for if the Lord were in the body in appearance only, and were crucified in appearance only, then I am also bound in appearance only. And why have I also surrendered myself to death, to fire, to the sword, to the wild beast? But in fact, I endure all these things for Christ, not in appearance only, but in reality, that I may suffer together with him, while he himself inwardly strengthens me, for of myself I have no such ability. Chapter 5 the dangers of errors. Some ignorantly deny him, or rather have been denied by him. Being the advocates of death rather than of the truth, these persons neither have the prophets persuaded, nor the laws of Moses, nor the gospels even to this day, nor the sufferings we have individually endured. For they think also the same thing regarding us. For what does anyone profit me if he commends me but blasphemes my Lord, not confessing that he was truly possessed of a body? But he who does not acknowledge this has in fact altogether denied him, being enveloped in death. I have not, however, thought good to write the names of such persons, inasmuch as they are unbelievers. Yeah, far, far be it from me to make any mention of them until they repent and return to the true belief in Christ's passions, which is our resurrection. Some have ignorantly denied him and advocate falsehood rather than the truth. These persons neither have the prophecies persuaded, nor the laws of Moses, nor the gospel even to this day, nor the sufferings we have individually endured. For they think also the same thing regarding us. For what does it profit if any one commends me but blasphemes my Lord, not owing him 
and to be God incarnate. He that does not confess this has in fact altogether denied him, being enveloped in death. I have not, however, thought good to write the names of such persons, inasmuch as they are unbelievers, and far be it from me to make any mention of them until they repent. Chapter 6 Unbelievers in the blood of Christ shall be condemned. Let no man deceive himself. Both things which are in heaven and the glorious angels and rulers, both visible and invisible, if they believe not in the blood of Christ, shall in consequence incur con condemnation. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Let not high place puff any one up, for that which is worth all is faith and love, to which nothing is to be preferred. But consider those who are of different opinion with respect to the grace of Christ, which is come unto us, how opposed they are to the will of God. They have no regard for love, no care for the widow, or the orphan, or the oppressed, of the bond, or of the free, of the hungry, or of the thirsty. Let no man deceive himself, unless he believes that Christ Jesus has lived in the flesh, and shall confess his cross and passion, and the blood which he shed for the salvation of the world, he shall not obtain eternal life. Whether ye be a king, or a priest, or a ruler, or a private person, a master, or a servant, a man, or a woman, he that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Let no man's place, or dig dignity, or riches puff him up. And let no man's low condition or poverty abrase him. For the chief points are faith towards God, hope towards Christ, the enjoyment of those good things for which we look, and love towards God and our neighbor. For thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and thy neighbor as thyself. And the Lord says, This is life eternal, to know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. And again, a new commandment give I unto you, that you love one another. And those two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Do you therefore notice those who preach other doctrines, how they affirm that the Father of Christ cannot be known, and how they exhibit amenity and deceit in their dealings with one another? They have no regard for love. They despise the good things we expect hereafter. They regard present things as if they were durable. They ridicule him that is an affliction. They laugh at him that is in bonds. Chapter 7 Let us stand aloof from such heretics. They abstain from the Eucharists, Eucharists and from prayer, because they confess not the Eucharists to be the flesh of our Savior Jesus Christ, which suffered for our sins, and which the Father of his goodness raised up again. Those, therefore, who speak against this gift of God and cure death in the midst of their disputes, but if but it were better for them to treat it with respect, that they also might rise again. It is fitting, therefore, that you should keep aloof from such persons, and not speak of them either in private or in public, but to give heed to the prophets, and above all, the, to the gospel, in which the passion of Christ has been revealed to us, and the resurrection has been fully proved. But avoid all divisions as the beginning of evils. They are ashamed of the cross. They mock at the passion. They make a jest of the resurrection. They are the offspring of that spirit who is the author of all evil, who led Adam by means of his wife to transgress the commandments, who slew Abel by the hands of Cain, who fought against Job, who was the accursor of Joshua, the son of Josedek, who sought to shift the faith of the apostles, who stirred up the multitude of the Jews against the Lord, who also now worketh in the children of disobedience, from whom the Lord Jesus Christ will deliver us, who prayed that, that the faith of the apostles might not fail, that not because he was not able of himself to preserve it, but because he rejoiced in the preeminence of the Father. It is fitting, therefore, that ye should keep aloof from such persons, and neither in private nor in public talk, to talk with them, but to give heed to the law and the prophets and to those who have preached to you the word of salvation. But flee from all abominable heresies and those that cause schisms and the beginning of evils. 
Chapter 8 Let nothing be done without the bishop. See that you all follow the bishop, even as Jesus Christ does the Father, and the presbytery, as you should, as you would the apostles. And reverence the deacons as being the institution of God. Let no man do anything connected with the church without the bishop. Let that be deemed a, a proper euchiarch, which is administered either by the bishop or by one to whom he has entrusted. Wherever the bishop shall appear, there let the, multi the multitude of the people also be, even as wherever Jesus Christ is, <coughs> there is the Catholic Church. It is not lawful without the bishop either to baptize or to celebrate a love feast. But whatsoever he shall approve of, that is also pleasing to God, so that everything that is done may be secure and valid. See that ye all follow the bishop, even as Christ Jesus does the Father, and the presbytery as ye would the apostles. Do ye also rever reverence the deacons, as those that carry out through their office the appointment of God. Let no man do anything connected with the church without the bishop. Let that be deemed a proper utriarch, which is administered either by the bishop or by one to whom he has entrusted. Wherever the bishop shall appear, there let the multitude of the people also be, even as where Christ is, there does all the heavenly hosts stand by, waiting upon him as the chief captain of the Lord's might and the governor of every intelligent nature. It is not lawful without the bishop either to baptize, or to offer, or to present sacrifice, or to celebrate a love feast. But that which seems good to him is also well-pleasing to God, that everything you do may be secure and valid. Chapter 9. Honor the Bishop Moreover, it is in accordance with reason that we should return to soberness of conduct, and while yet we have opportunity to exercise repentance towards God, it is well to reverence both God and the bishop. He who honors the bishop has been honored by God, he who does anything without the knowledge of the bishop does in reality serve the devil. Let all things then abound to you through grace, for ye are worthy. Ye have refreshed me in all things, and Jesus Christ shall refresh you. You shall love me when absent as well as when in present. May God recompense you for whose sake, while ye enduring all things, ye shall attain unto him. Moreover, it is in accordance with reason that we should return to soberness of conduct, and while yet we have opportunity to exercise repentance towards God. In Hades, there is one who can confess his sins. There is no one who can confess his sins. For behold, the man and his works is before him. And the scripture saith, My son, honor thou God and the king, and say, I honor thou God indeed as the author and the Lord of all things, but the bishop as the high priest, who bears the image of God, of God inasmuch as he is a ruler, and of Christ in his capacity of a priest. After him we must also honor the king, for there is no one superior to God, or even like to him, among all the beings that exist, nor is there any one in the church greater than the bishop, who ministers as a priest to, to God for the salvation of the whole world. Nor again is there any one among rulers to be compared with the king, who secures peace and good order to those over whom he rules. He who honors the bishop shall be honored by God, even as he that dishonors him shall be punished by God. For if he that rises up against kings is justly held worthy of punishment, and as much as he dissolves public order, of how much sore punishment suppose you shall be, he be thought worthy, who presumes to do anything without the bishop, thus both destroying the church's unity and throwing its order into confusion. For the priesthood is the very highest point of all good things among men, against which whosoever is mad enough to strive dishonors not man but God and Christ Jesus, the firstborn and the only high priest. By nature of the Father, let all things therefore be done by you with good order in Christ. Let the laity be subject to the deacons, the deacons to the presbyters, the presbyters to the bishop, the bishop to Christ, even as he is to the Father, 
As you, brethren, have refreshed me, so will Jesus Christ refresh you. You have loved me when absent as well as when present. God will recompense you for whose sake you have shown such kindness towards his prisoner. For even if I am not worthy of it, yet your zeal to help me is admirable. Thing. For he who honors a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. It is manifest also that he who honors a prisoner of Jesus Christ shall receive the reward of the martyrs. Chapter 10 Acknowledgement of Their Kindness Ye have done well in receiving Philo and Rheus Ag Agathopus as servants of Christ our God, who have followed me for the sake of God, and who gives thanks to the Lord in your behalf, because ye have in every way refreshed them. None of these things shall be lost to you. May my spirit be for you, and my bonds which ye have not despised or been ashamed of, nor shall Jesus Christ, our perfect hope, be ashamed of you. You have done well in receiving Philo and Gaius and Agathopus, who, being the servants of Christ, have followed me for the sake of God, and who greatly bless the Lord in your behalf, because you have in every way refreshed them. None of those things which you have done to them shall be passed by without being reckoned unto you. The Lord grant to you that ye may find mercy of the Lord in that day. May my spirit be for you, and my bonds which ye have not despised or have been ashamed of, Wherefore, neither shall Jesus Christ, our perfect hope, be ashamed of you. Chapter 11 Request to send a messenger to Antioch. Your prayer has reached to the church which is in Antioch in Syria, coming from a place bound with chains most acceptable to God. I salute all, I who am not worthy to be styled from thence, Inasmuch as I am the least of them, nevertheless, according to the will of God, I have been thought worthy of this honor. Not that I have in any sense of having deserved it, but by the grace of God, which I wish may be perfectly given to me, that through your prayers I may obtain to God, in order, therefore, that your work, work may be complete both on earth and in heaven, it is fitting that for the honor of God, your church should elect some worthy delegate, so that he, journey, journeying into Syria, may congratulate them that they are now at peace and are restored to their proper greatness, and that their proper constitution has been reestablished among them. It seems then to me a becoming thing that you should send someone of your number with an epistle, so that in company with them, he may rejoice over the tranquility which, according to the will of God, they have obtained, and because that through the your prayers they have now reached the harbor. As persons who are perfect, ye should also aim at those things which are perfect. For when you are desirous to do well, God is also ready to assist you. Your prayers have reached to the church of Antioch, and it is at peace. Coming from the place bound, I salute you. I, who am not worthy to be styled from thence, inasmuch as I am the least of them, nevertheless, according to the will of God, I have been thought worthy of this honor. Not that I have in any sense of having deserved it, but by the grace of God, which I wish may be perfectly given to me, that through your prayers I may attain to God, in order, therefore, that your work may be complete, both on earth and heaven. It is fitting that for the honor of God your church should elect some worthy delegate, so that he journeying into Syria may congratulate them that are that they are now at peace and are restored to their proper greatness, and that their proper constitution has been reestablished among them. What appears to me proper to be done is this that you should send some of your numbers with an epistle, so that in company with them he may rejoice over the tranquility which according to the will of God they have obtained, and because that through your prayers I have secured Christ as a safe harbor. As persons who are perfect, you should also aim at that. Those things which are perfect, which when you are desirous to do well, desires to do well, God is also ready to assist you. Chapter 11 
Salutations. The love of the brethren at Troas salutes you. Whence also I write to you by Burris, whom you sent with me, together with the Ephesians, your brethren, and who has in all things refreshed me. And I would that all may imitate him. And being a pattern of a minister of God, grace will reward him in all things. I salute your most worthy bishop, and your very venerable presbytery, and your deacons, my fellow servants, and all of you individually, as well as generally, in the name of Jesus Christ, and in his flesh and blood, in his passion and resurrection, both corporeal and spiritual, in union with God and you, grace, mercy, peace, and patience be with you forever and ever more. The love of your brethren at Treos salutes you, wherein also I write to you by Burgess, whom you sent with me together with the Ephesians, your brethren, and who has in all things refreshed me. And I would that all may imitate him as being a pattern of a minister of God. The grace of the Lord will reward him in all things. I salute your most worthy bishop, Polycarp, and your venerable presbytery, and your Christ-bearing deacons, my fellow servants, and all of you individually, as well as generally in the name of Christ Jesus, and in his flesh and blood, his passion and resurrection, both corporeal and spiritual, in union with God and you, grace, mercy, peace, and patience be with you in Christ forevermore. Chapter 13 Conclusion I salute the families of my brethren with their wives and children and the virgins who called, who are called widows. Be ye strong, I pray, in the power of the Holy Ghost. Philo, who is with me, greets you. I salute the house of Tavius and pray, pray that it may be confirmed in faith and love, both corporeal and spiritual. I salute Alke my well-beloved, and the incomparable Dothanus and Eticanus, and all by name. Fare ye well in the grace of God. I salute the families of my brethren with their wives and children, and those that are ever virgins and the widows. Be ye strong, <clears throat> I pray in the power of the Holy Ghost. Philo, my, ser my fellow servant, who is with me, greets you. I salute the house of Tavius and pray that it may be confirmed in faith and love, both corporeal and spiritual. I salute Alke, my well-beloved, and the incomparable Daphnis, and Eutychonus, and all by name. Fare ye well in the grace of God, and of our Lord Jesus Christ, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and divine and sacred wisdom.